Thanks for listening to the Underdog Podcast presented by the Riley Decker Companies. Please do us a favor and help us change and improve lives by subscribing and giving us a rating on the platform of your choice. Thank you. My name is Rayvon Griffith. I was born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio. Growing up, I witnessed a lot of poverty, violence, drugs, and crimes. It all humbled me to find a way out and to find an escape plan. I started playing basketball because of my friend BJ. BJ was my best friend who passed away. It was his dream to go to the league and NBA. I think that I'm pursuing that dream for him. My mom and dad is another inspiration in my life. My mom spent her whole life raising eight kids in a small apartment. She never had a vacation, even one day off. I remember being 12 years old when my mom got shot in the drive-by sitting outside. My life really changed when I started playing for the North Coast Blue Chips. I really remember it like it was yesterday. The CEO texted me on Instagram after seeing my highlights of me dunking and asked, did I want to play? At first I said no, (laughs) then I said yes. They flew me out to Milwaukee for a tournament, and after that, my followers started going crazy. My brother Stax and Flea played a huge role in my life, but these next few years is going to be extremely tough for me mentally. Knowing that Stax may have to go away for some time, possibly missing my graduation and me going off to college. That's why I'm going so hard. My passion, my dedication, my commitment, my ambition. I need my family out the hood. I need my brothers out the streets. I got to perform every night. I can't take a day off because it's not only my dream, it's our dream, their dream. My family, all I got. The fans is cool, the people you meet along the way, but what happens when I don't perform one night? What happens when I have a bad game? Will the perception change? Will the expectation go down? Will you still look at me the same? Or will you blame me for being human? That's why I'm the last hole, last hole, last hole, last hole. Ravon, welcome to the Underdog Podcast. How we doing? I'm doing good. Man, love to have you in here. If that didn't get anyone fired up, I don't know. I'm, I'm ready to, I wish I could dunk still. Back in the day, I could. It's been a minute, but uh, nonetheless, man, the last hope, hometown hero. Glad to have you on the Underdog Podcast. For sure. I appreciate you guys having me. For sure. So just a little bit of background, those, we got you know a national audience, not everyone's from Cincinnati, Ohio, but he is the hometown hero, uh, as you see there in the last hope video. Some really special stuff. So just a little bit about Rayvon before we get rolling in here. He uh, recently committed to the University of Cincinnati, um, being that hometown hero. Number one player in the state of Ohio, um, rated in the top 50, according to a lot of different experts out there. Um, I know that's rising, so continue to, to do your thing there. Seventh highest rated recruit in the, in the program. Some great stuff there. Um, but really want to share your story. Those, those are all great things, but the underdog podcast, right? We're super thankful to have you here. Um, first high school person in, in our 130 plus episodes. So really special, really thank you. But as you see in the video, I think for me, you know, basketball aside, super excited for you to use your platform, you know, to do the different things that you want to do. So can you kind of talk about your upbringing? I know you talk about in the video, you know, with some violence, drugs, crimes, you know, and different things that kind of humbled you as, as early on in your life? No, uh, growing up, it was rough, but I feel like that's who uh, it made me, who I am today. You know, it uh, really humbled me to, you know, um, I've been through some rough things, you know, just going back, thinking on them things, you know, it just carried me on the court, you know, uh, just carried that dog in me. You know, I feel like that's what keep me going. For sure. And uh, there's some, I think the special piece that I love to learn Hated to hear, but loved to learn how you used, you know, a tragedy 
to really drive you, right? Because I was a football guy. I think you were in football. Yeah. Um, you turned to basketball after, unfortunately, the the passing of, of your friend BJ. Can you kind of touch upon like that point? We always talk about kind of this underdog path or like this path of journey in your life, like something like that happens. Like how did that impact you? How has that gotten you know to you where you are today? It impacted me a lot. Growing up, I was a football player. I played wide receiver. I played basketball on the side, but I never really took it serious. You know, I took it as a joke, really, just because all my friends was playing. And then when I hit the sixth grade, my friend BJ passed away. And then, you know, um, I just thought of it like, you know, I want to do this for him. You know, I want to get a D1 offer for him, you know, uh, possibly playing, you know, the NBA for him. You know, uh, I know he's just looking down on me and, you know, uh, you know, he happy I'm still doing it for him for sure. For sure. I know. Uh, I'm sure he was watching. Uh, we're not playing your commitment video, but I'm sure he was watching that and, I think there's, I joined the Instagram following. I think there's like 3,000 at one point. Yeah. So, um, you know, that was really cool. I'm sure he he was watching that. Um, and you also talk about, I think you're the youngest, right, of eight siblings? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm the youngest I got three eight. kids. I don't know. There's a lot of you guys, man. Like, eight, eight. Can you talk about, you know, I was the younger brother of one, so I had an older brother, and, it, and you know, he made me tough. So can you talk about, I know you talk about, you know, your family. Some are here right now. Talk about being the youngest of eight, you know, and how important um, your family is to you and in, in your development as well. Being the youngest of eight, you know, it's, you, you know, it's hard, but, you know, it's also a blessing. You know, uh, they much older than me. I'm the only one still in high school. So, you know, they just give me that knowledge, you know, life and, you know, the things they've been through. You know, they can uh, just, you know, support me on this journey. You know, uh, just tell me, you know, things, uh, what uh, to do and what not to do. For sure. It looks like I see some crutches over there. Are you uh, roughing them up on the, on the post or what? We <laughs> oh, yeah, so, uh, so about like last week or something like that, uh, we was working out and I always tell him, you know, not to guard me while I'm doing drills. Right. And then, you know, uh, we was on Instagram live. And he challenged me to a 1v1. Ooh. And then uh, I did a move on him and then uh, he failed. And then we thought he was playing, but he failed. And he didn't get back up. And then... He said he went to the doctor and he tore a ligament or something. Oh like man, I love it. See, getting older is rough. So yeah, enjoy sure. your youth. You're still <laughs> a very young man. So those that don't know, he's a junior rising to be a senior, right? Um, you know, in, in a few other things, I think. So I talked. One of our previous guests was actually Brooke Cups. Mm. I know Brooke. You know, I talked to Brooke about about you, and he calls you Ray. So I was like, is it Rayvon or is it Ray? I was like, he's like, he'll go by either. But he's like, man, Ray, um, like. I know you guys went on road trips with the Blue Chips. Now he's coaching at Midwest, right? And uh, Gabe's obviously one heck of a player here locally. Can you talk touch upon, we just touched upon family. What about your coaches, right? Like a Brooke Cups or your high school coach. Can you talk about how important um, coaching in development is to you? It's, you know, it's very important. You know, uh, every coach, you know, I play for, I feel like I built a bond with that can, you know, go on for a lifetime. You know, I can call any single one of my coaches I ever played for, you know, get advice, you know, Brooke, you know, um, I travel with him, you know, uh, playing with the blue chips and stuff like that, you know, uh, travel and the travel with him uh, with Midwest, you know, he's just a, you know, a great guy to be around, you know, me and Gabe, you know, got a good relationship, you know, uh, just off the floor, you know, uh, when I wasn't playing with them, you know, I could always call uh, their family, uh, you know, just get anything I need. For sure. I was, I was trying to poke Brooks and say, Hey, can we get Bro or uh, Gabe over to UC? I don't know if that's going to happen, <laughs> but I know you're on the recruiting trail, I'm sure, to try to bring some more talent here to Cincinnati and um, kind of going back to the family piece. I know your mom, you know, my mom, you know, I'm a mama's boy, right? Love my mom. Shout out to, to Miss Karen. But um, touch upon, you know, the importance. I think in the video you say, like, she got, you know, shot, right? Mm. Or uh, she had a gun wound. And can you touch upon, like, some of that adversity, too? Is like, is your mom, that's got to be tough, right? I can only imagine. Can you kind of touch upon your mom and that event and how that's affe affected you as well? For sure. Uh, we was living downtown at the time. Uh, she was sitting outside with some friends. You know, uh, it was just a drive-by shooting, and she got uh, shot above her foot. And, you know, uh, it really just taught me, you know, don't take life for granted. You know, she told me that. Uh, my whole family told me that, you know, uh, we just blessed that she's still here because, you know, it could have been uh, way worse. You know, uh, just blessed to have my mom here and, you know, she can still give me advice to this day. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a tough event. So glad that she's okay. And um, I know that's important, like you said, you know, getting your family out of the hood, brothers off the streets. Like now you're using basketball as a platform, right? And I know uh, 
in uh, blue chips, I believe, obviously, Gay was known for, uh, I think, hitting those shots against LeBron James or Bronny James. I know you played there. and yeah. So talking about platforms, right? You kind of experienced that as, what, a seventh grader? Yeah, seventh grader. How impactful, you know, I think more than just an athlete, right? LeBron talks about that and a lot of the other athletes. Can you touch upon now how you're using you know, basketball to come on the underdog podcast, come on other platforms, maybe what you learn from, you know, having interactions with the Bronny James is LeBron James or different people like that. Me and LeBron, you know, it was just crazy because I thought, you know, uh, he was just a humble dude, you know, and now I look at him as, you know, just any other person in the world, you know, he's that type of guy, you know, just so cool to be around and stuff like that. You know, all the attention at a young age, you know, really helped me now because, you know, I'm getting so much attention now. And I just look back on my younger days on like, how did I handle that situation? You know, when we had sold out gyms and stuff like that and just uh, take that from when I was younger and use it now. Yeah, I look at LeBron, like I'm a huge Cavs fan from Ohio, born and raised, and I felt like LeBron was my hometown hero. So now I think a lot of kids and a lot of people in the community are looking, like you said, like you're taking on that weight, right? You're saying, hey, I am the, you know, somewhat the last hope for my family, potentially. I'm the hometown hero. I want to turn this program around and not just, like you said, get to the Big 12 and win. You want to win a national championship, as you said. Um, can you touch upon like that competitiveness, that belief, um, you know, really how you're helping turn this city around? I love my city, you know, from Cincinnati, born and raised, grew up here, you know, never left, you know, and, uh, I feel like uh, playing for Cincinnati is a great opportunity. You know, anytime I get to rep my city, you know, and it's the best, uh, best, you know, decision for me, you know, I'm gonna take it for sure. So, you know, uh. Uh, Cincinnati entering the Big 12, you know, that's one of the best conferences in college basketball. So, you know, that's a conference I definitely want to play in. And, you know, uh, playing there, you know, just with my, you know, home city, you know, it's definitely going to be a blessing. You know, I'm definitely going to, you know, uh, give it everything I got when I get there. Yeah, and I talk about it, like, from a business perspective, like, being that leader, being that quarterback, for you, there's pressure, right? And you're a young man. I'm, I'm an old man. <laughs> right? I'm running a company. I feel that pressure every day. How are you going to approach, you know, going into Cincinnati, working with your team? Like, what are some things that, you know, you're going to bring? I think when I watch your game, I'm not a basketball expert. I'm a football guy once again. But what I see is like heart and soul, like watching the, you guys won the state championship. You're going back for a second one, back to back, right? Taft High School hadn't won in what, since 2011 or 12. So it's been a minute. So you bring that back. Like, how do you bring championship level back? Is it grit? Is it the grind? Is it just the work ethic? Is it recruiting other guys that believe in that? Like, what are your kind of your thoughts on helping Coach Miller, you know, rebuild the program? I feel like when I get there, you know, I'm going to be a new guy. So, you know, I'm going to really, you know, uh, learn from the other guys, you know, that been there and stuff like that. You know, uh, take everything, you know, they give me, you know, apply it to the game, you know, uh, get to know all those guys, you know, bring in the guys, uh, that, you know, uh, coming with me, hopefully, you know, just uh, rock from there. Yeah, no, I love it. I know our best, the best recruiter, no offense to Coach Miller, but we, we got our best recruiter now. <laughs> Those guys, that you, you know, you bring, you know, great guys bring talent along with them. Um, I know recently you talk about, you know, at times you've been doubted, right? Been called overrated. You said you've been booed. Can you talk upon how that's impacted, like, what what external motivation, right? All those doubters, right? Say, all right, he's not top 50 in the country, whatever they're saying about you. Now you're obviously kind of storming from, it seems like up the board, you're coming home, staying home, I should say, and, you know, competing. Can you kind of talk about how that kind of fuels your fire? Some of those people that are, are doubting you. So the very first game of the season, I feel like was uh, the worst game I ever played in my life. So, you know, uh, and it was a sold out crowd. You know, we played a pretty good team. Uh, you know, everybody booed me, doubted me, you know, and after that game, you know, that's where, uh, that's where it really started for me, you know, because it shows, you know, going into that game, everybody, you know, was, you know, Rayvon going to be this, Tav going to be this, you know, uh, showing, you know, they really showed their true colors after that first game. So just really just humbling me, you know, and we all went to the gym, you know, and we did what we had to do. We went out and got a state championship. That's yeah. how we responded to that first game. Love it, man. I love it. So I, I, uh, I use a lot of that. My, you know, I think that underdog approach, that chip, you talk a lot about that swagger, that chip. And so I know you're going to continue to use that. Um, congrats, by the way, on, on a state championship. So appreciate it. I know you guys overcome some adversity 
I knew uh, you talked about trust, right? Because you guys were 19 and eight, I believe overall. So it wasn't like this perfect undefeated season, right? You had some adversity yeah, for sure. uh, with the senators, um, the Taft senators. And can you kind of touch upon your quoted, I think after the state championship, like we had to start trusting ourselves, right? Trusting each other. Can you touch upon like how important in a team setting and to have success trust is? You know, it's, you know, it plays a big role, big, big role. Cause you know, we lost eight games during the season. I feel like that we shouldn't have lost, you know? And uh, I feel like every eight game we lost, you know, we didn't trust each other, you know? And if we did, we stopped trusting each other. We played, you know, Highlands, you know, the, uh, they won uh, the state championship last year um, in Kentucky. You know, uh, we was up 22 at halftime. And then, you know, we lost to uh, Ian. Uh, he was, uh, you know, sick and he left at halftime. So, you know, they came back and uh, ended up winning the game. You know, I feel like we stopped, uh, when we lost one of our best players, you know, we stopped trusting each other. Uh, we stopped doing what Coach say. So just little things like that, you know, can, you know, cost a game. You know, that could have been in a, you know, uh, in the playoff, of uh, the playoffs, you know, we could have, you know, folded. But I feel like in the playoffs, we really started trusting each other. And I feel like that's how we won the state championship. Yeah, it was fun to watch you guys play. I was watching highlights and, Fun team, man. You guys play hard and, and exciting basketball, uh, and we're getting after it. And what do you think? You know, we talk about sustaining excellence. What's it going to take for for Ravon and Taft Senators to repeat? Because that's not easy, right? To 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 sustain a back to back championship. So, what are you guys doing? You know, to make sure that you position yourself to do that. Doing everything we did last year. Work hard. Listen, the new guys we got coming in, you know, uh, get them on the board, you know, and, you know, uh, this year was a revenge tour, you know, now other people are going to be headhunting for us. So, you know, we've got to stay together, you know, we've got to prepare for the worst. For sure. For sure. I know you're going to put that work in. So um, I got to talk about my guy. I, I've developed a, a great relationship with Wes Miller myself. I think that's a common bond between the two of us. Think highly, love the guy. Um, first time we met, I could feel how genuine he truly is. 100%. You know, I was a walk on in football. He was a walk on in basketball, right? At, at Carolina, earning a scholarship. Um, just a guy that I think is a grit and a grinder and, and is really working hard to turn this program around. Can you touch upon what you see in Coach Miller? Obviously, that's how I feel about him, right? Love the guy myself. Um, you know, what do you see in Coach Miller and why do you want to play for, for a guy like that? My first conversation with Coach Wes Miller, you know, he just – I never met somebody that brings so much energy to a normal conversation. I'm like – like, I was talking to my brother and stuff like that, like, damn, why he brings so much energy? But it just shows, you know, how passionate, you know, he is about his job. You know, that's definitely a coach I want to play for. Yeah, I, I was uh, watching, what, the gritty? Is that what we call it, oh, yeah, right? I yeah. think he – he's pretty – how would you rate Coach Wes Miller's gritty? What would you say? One to ten. What do we got here? He told me that was his first time, so I'm going to give him a ten. He oh, it. all right, all right. Rayvon giving – Giving Wes some credit there. I, I was impressed. I was like, I thought he would have practiced. That's his first time. Yeah. That's impressive because I, I got a lot of work to do. I've been trying to do that after watching Jamar Chase do it mm. for the Bengals all the time in the end zone. I've, I, we try to do it here in the hallway at the at the office, and I'm obviously not not too good at it. <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll have to say, as you guys continue to progress, that's going to have to be part. You have to say, hey, man, after we win big games, you got a gritty yeah, so into the locker room. So He's got a gritty in the locker room. We got to make so this a tradition here at, at Cincinnati. Yeah, but, so. um, you know, he talks about, you know, I think being from, you know, lower price Hill, Bearcat toughness, right? Can you touch upon, you know, I've watched over the last, I've lived here for a little over a decade. Um, the teams that were here previously, they were tough, in my opinion, right? Um, can you touch upon how important being a Bearcat, you know, bringing that Bearcat toughness back to, to UC is? I feel like, you know, the Bearcats, you know, one of the toughest college programs, you know, in the nation. And I feel like I'm a tough player. So, you know, I'm a tough player going to a, you know, a tough program. So me just being another tough player, you know, I'm going to do what I got to do. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Bringing that, uh, getting after I know he talks a lot about no finish line um you know the best is ahead and just constantly like you said that energy I, I told him I said man I, I gotta get on your energy level he sure. does bring it which I love because I've, I've been around some some coaches and they're great coaches but he definitely has that different energy yeah, which I know is contagious sure. so <laughs> um few fun questions as, as we kind of come to an end here 
uh, we'll, we'll do, I'm, I always tell the people always say, don't make it Cincinnati specific, but mm. we're going to throw those rules out so. and we're going to, we're just going to talk straight Cincinnati. What is Rayvon's favorite food here in the city? What would you say? You get uh, one meal. Where are we going? Uh, uh, McDonald's. 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 Was, oh. McDonald's or Wendy's. I ain't a, I ain't a, you know, fancy type guy. I'm the type that, you okay. know, just get some food and just go. Okay, get food and go. So no like steakhouse, no nah, like Ruby's, nah. Tony's, nothing. You're just straight. Nah. Let's get some food and move on. Yeah. Every now and then you know it's great, but I'm I'm gonna get some food and go home type pretty, guy. Pretty, what is, you know, what's your favorite thing to do around this city? Like what if you could go out and do one thing or what do you enjoy doing outside of basketball? Leave it at that. Um what do you what would you go and do? Uh hang out with friends, you know, uh, go down to the banks, uh go to the movies, something like that, just little stuff. Uh, I don't really go out that much like that. So, you know, just stuff like that that I did in the past for sure. Yeah, our uh, our Cincinnati Red Legs are, are not doing too well. So. <laughs> <laughs> those, those are cheap seats right there. You yeah. can get into the stadium. But uh, um, nonetheless, a little bit different than, than the Bengals. And I think Coach Fickle, he's been on our podcast and a big friend of the show. Um, he's brought championship DNA back to Cincinnati Athletics through football. Mm. Right. And, and I hope that obviously as you guys continue to progress, you know, I think you guys are going to do just that and um, can't thank you enough for, for coming on the underdog podcast. Do you have, I've never really done this a whole lot. What questions do you have for me? Is there anything that I can, any, any knowledge, I guess, I don't know what they, they're worth here, but any, any rave on, you want to put me on the hot seat? I know I've asked you a few, anything that comes to mind? Uh no, I don't got no questions. I just want to say, you know, thank you for, you know, having me. You know, I didn't know I was the, you know, first high school player to be on here. So, you know, that makes me feel good. You know, I really appreciate you guys for having me. Yeah, well, we're um, we're season ticket holders. We're right there on the court, uh, on, on, on the on the court side. So I'm sure you guys will get the hookup. But if not, we'll have some of the Griffith family down there. And, um, you know, I, I just very thankful for your time coming here after school, taking some time away to share your story. How does anyone um, that's listening, I know we got a lot of folks across the country, they might say, hey, man, I want to really learn about Rayvon, right, and, and watch and support what you're doing. How do they, what's your Twitter handle, Instagram, anything, any other uh, areas that they can follow you? Oh, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Rayvon Griffith. You can follow me on Twitter at Griffith Rayvon, and those are the social medias I use the most. Sounds good. Like I said, my man was a uh, 3,000 followers, I think, for that commitment amongst many different platforms. It was a highly anticipated, um, but more importantly, man, you're a humble dude. I know uh, you're a tough guy. I love watching you play. I have to come uh, check out some high school games this year, and obviously we'll be watching you closely in Cincinnati. So thank you again uh, for coming on the Underdog Podcast. For sure. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Underdog Podcast. Please subscribe and rate our podcast on the Apple and Google Podcast apps. Leave a five-star rating and send our Twitter handle a screenshot of your rating at Underdog Pod with your shirt size for a chance to win a free t-shirt. See you next week on the UDP.